So my recommendation for working through code notebooks like this is to go ahead, open up the PyKX course on the KX Academy. And then when you open this lesson, you'll see notebooks available for each section. So there'll be five notebooks available. Go ahead, open up section one notebook, PyKX Basics, put that in another tab, and that way we can work through the notebook together. Okay, so let's go ahead, we'll get started with the notebook. And first up, all we're gonna do is do some basic setup and we'll import uh, NumPy and Pandas, PyArrow. We're also gonna import PyKX as KX, is typically how uh, we import that, just for simplicity's sake. And then we'll import uh, some date time functionality as we will be doing some date time data types later in the notebook. All right, so we have everything we need imported and let's begin this notebook. So first we're gonna be looking at the data structures that are available to us in PyKX and starting with atomic types. And atomic types are the most basic type available to us in PyKX. And if we wanna learn more about these, and I highly recommend you do, uh, check out this reference card right here. I have it open in another, in another tab. And here it lists out all the types for us. So we can see all the types that are available to us. And then they all have a symbol um, that relates to them. And as we will see in this notebook, uh, we will use that to actually generate these types of data. Okay, so let's put that into practice. Let's generate a float. And here, what we're gonna do is say kx, and remember we just imported pi kx as kx, dot float atom. So in this case, we're creating a float atom, a float atomic type 1.0. So that's one way we can do it but we can also do it using another method called kx.q where we specify 1.0 and put an f at the end. And remember, if we come over to our reference card, we can see that the float type can also be represented as an f. And if we append that f to the end of this 1.0, pykx is gonna understand that we're generating a float here. So if we run this code, we're either way we do it, we're going to be generating one F or a PyKX float atomic type. Next, let's do the same sort of thing with an integer. So we'll just do KX int atom, for example, and we just want to do a integer of one, create an integer of one, or the second method, of course, KX.Q, one I, and if you go look at that reference card, you're going to see that I is related to the int atomic type. So we'll run this code and either way you do it, you create your one integer. Another common atomic type that you'll work with is Booleans, true or false. And there's a, a couple different ways that we can create these Boolean atomic types, kx.booleanatom, true, one, or kx.q, one b. All of these top three are gonna create a true Boolean we can obviously do the opposite for false, kx.boolean atom false, zero, or kx.q, zero, b. And of course, as you can imagine, the b just represents your Boolean atomic type. So if we run this, we will generate three true Booleans and three false Booleans as the code specifies. Now, another common atomic type is the atomic symbol type. And this you will use often in PyKX when you're working, for example, with capital markets data, where you have a specific symbol or a specific ticker that you're working with. Um, we actually have an atomic type to represent those symbols. And that's called a symbol atom. You generate it the same way, or you can do it with kx.q where you put the tick in before the symbol that we're specifying. And if you look at that reference card, you'll see that this represents the creation of a symbol atomic type. So in this case, we're creating an ABC symbol atomic type. And finally, uh, the last atomic types that we're gonna talk about are timestamp types and date types. So you can create a timestamp type just using kx.q and putting in the timestamp of interest. You could also create a specific date type, kx.q, put in your date in this format with a D at the end, as in the reference card, or an atomic month. And these are just a few of the options. So 
We haven't covered all the atomic types here, but these are some of the common ones. And if you're interested in other atomic types, just look at that reference card. Okay, so here I'm going to ask you, go ahead and pause the video. There's an exercise available. Go ahead and see if you can, uh, see if you can complete this exercise. And then you can check your work by clicking the real reveal solution button. Okay, so next we'll look at a little bit more complex of data structures, which are collection types. Think about vectors and lists and dictionaries. Well, just like in Python, we can create many of these data types. We can do the same in PyKX. So if we wanted to create a vector, uh, which in a sense is sort of like a list that just holds a specific data type, then we can do that using kx.int vector. And typically with vectors, you're going to be holding numeric values that are all of the same type. So all integers in this case. Um, so kx.int vector, you pass in the integers that you want within your vector, and it will actually create that pi kx vector for you. Now you could do the same from a numpy array as well. So if you had a numpy array available to you that you wanted to work with in pi kx, you can translate that directly into a pi kx integer vector uh, using int vector. And we do that here. And you'll see that we can also specify the exact data type that we want. And in this case, int32 is what we're specifying. If we have a panda series that we would like to translate into a vector, we can do that using the 2q method. And we'll see a little bit more about this later. But this just takes a Pythonic type, like a pandas type or a numpy type or another type in Python, and translates that into the according pykx type. So if we do this, we're taking that panda series and creating a pykx long vector, a vector of long values. If we wanted to generate a list, we can just use kx.list and put in whatever values we want into that list. Uh, in this case, we're passing in a list of three different lists, and it, it's pretty simple to execute this. All we do is use kx.list, and we're able to create that pykx list collection type. Dictionaries are another common type of data structure that we'll see, and that just consists of a key and a value. And we may have multiple keys and multiple values within a dictionary. So in this case, we have a key of x and x1, so two different keys, and each of these keys hold separate values. So if we run this kx.dictionary on these key value pairs, we can see exactly the output here of that dictionary. And then finally, to create PyKX tables. And this is one of the very common data types that we'll be working with. In fact, in section three, we have an entire lesson on working with PyKX tables. And tables are nothing but rows and columns. And in this case, there's a couple ways we can actually create that PyKX table. First, we can take our kx.table, pass in the values for each of the rows, and then the names for each of the columns here and run that and we get our pykx table. The other way we can do this is do kx.table and then pass in key value pairs for each column. So we take our first column, what are the, all the values for that column, our second column, and so on and so forth, and we can generate the same exact table this way. And one additional uh, functionality with pykx is we can generate a table and then as we're generating it, we can actually decide on a specific row that we want to represent our table index. And an index is just a special row within a table that can be used for row identification, a unique label for each specific row. And it can also be used to enhance and make more efficient certain operations that you run upon your table. So to do this, we do the same thing as we did above, and we just add the dot set index on the specific column that we would like our index to be. And if we look at the result, we can see X is the, uh, is the index. Okay, so after going through those um, collection data types, go ahead, pause the video, and see if you can solve this exercise. 
and then to find out if you did it right, just click reveal solution.